All right, hey everybody, this is Dave Durante with Power Monkey Fitness, back again with a little bit of instruction on some gymnastics movement. Today we're gonna to be discussing the L-sit, all right? I know it's a movement that a lot of you guys are trying to attain, some of you guys have better than most, but we really wanna kinda of key in on what to look for, what position is supposed to be kind of trying to work towards, and what are the common misconceptions, some of the common errors and points of performance that we wanna be think thinking about with this particular skill. So, a couple things just positionally with an L-sit. So we'll be starting off with some positional work on the parallettes. I think it's a good place for you guys to be able to see what's going on. Ideally, what we're thinking about with a correct L-sit is compression, all right? Something we've talked about with some other movements, things like presses to handstand, things like toes to bar. What is compression? What are the factors that play into compression? Compression really has two factors. You guys have probably heard me say this before. The uh, component that has to do with strength is with regards to your abdominals and your hip flexors. And the position, uh, the component uh, of your compression that has to do with mobility has to do with your lower back and your hamstrings. It's less of a factor of mobility because we're only trying to work towards a 90 degree angle, eventually maybe working beyond where it will become more of a factor. But for right now, what your biggest limiting factor is generally going to be whether or not my core with regards to abdominals and hip flexors are strong enough to be able to get me to that position. Now, positionally, the shorter the lever, the easier the position is going to be. So if you're working on L-sits, it does not mean that you have to be thinking about a fully extended locked out knee position. In fact, I would prefer you to be thinking about starting from a tuck with your knees deep into your chest, shortening that lever so you can focus on torso position. Ideally, this is one of the biggest problems that I see with people working on L-sits. Ideally, what we're looking for here is a position where our shoulder is staying on top of the hand, even slightly back, all right? What most people's interpretation is when they're doing an L-sit is they compensate forward. So what ends up happening is it becomes predominantly an anterior delt type of an exercise, also related to pec and bicep, almost like you're going towards a planche type of a movement because people are stronger here. But positionally, what ends up happening is we're starting to see a more internal rotation from the shoulder as you get that shoulder leaning in that direction. So ideally, we're gonna be thinking about working in the opposing direction, leaning the shoulders back. So if we were to watch from the side, with our knees still down on the ground, just showing you positionally what we're looking for, shoulders, instead of leaning here, we're gonna be thinking more about leaning back, which means in turn that as our shoulders lean back, our hips, knees, and feet are gonna be driving forward to compensate for that weight change, all right? So it's gonna be a little bit of a difference in terms of what you're activating. It will probably feel very weak because you guys are so used to dominating from the front part of the shoulder, but this weight change, shifting back, is going to help in terms of what we're trying to work towards from a positional standpoint, all right? A couple other things in terms of setup. The width of the parallettes should always be more towards that elbow to fingertip designation, all right? Uh, the way we think about it from a handstand perspective will be our elbow, or excuse me, our middle finger to the outside of the shoulder. We call it shoulder width. That is the definition that we like to use. It plays very well into the definition that we use in the gymnastics world. It's how I want you to do your L-sit hold. It's how I want you to do your handstands, your planks, hang from bar, hang from the rings. It will be our universal definition of shoulder width. Middle finger to the outside of the shoulder. If you're unaware of where those hands need to go when you're on parallettes, use the elbow to fingertip as a good designation in terms of distance apart, okay? Along with that, elbow positioning. And this is gonna fall in line very similarly to what we're trying to do in our handstands. When your hands are flat down on the ground, we wanna be thinking about externally rotating from the shoulder, getting the pit of that elbow to face more forward to help get into that locked out bone on bone skeletal structure doing the work type of a position as opposed to internally rotating which normally tends to lead to a more kinked position more susceptible to bending relying more on the muscle structure as opposed to the locked out position to get into that fully locked out position so when you're on parallettes you want to be thinking about externally rotating it will help pull the shoulder back into position and we're going to be thinking about the pit of the elbow facing a little bit more in the direction of those hands the tuck position, even if you're just on the support side with your feet down on the ground, you can work a little bit more on what the support is looking like here. I don't want you to be shrugged from the shoulder. You want to be driving down into the ground, creating a long spine, thinking about a lot of separation between your ears and your shoulders. You're not sinking down in this position. So you're only thinking about trying to create as a long of a spine as you possibly can. Now, like we talked about, shorten the lever is going to be kind of part one. 
So what we'll try to do here is just a three second hold with those knees as deep into the chest as possible. And we'll show you the two variation, one that has a tendency to lean forward and then one that leans back. So version one, feet off the ground, leaning the shoulders forward. This is a very common error that we see with our tuck holds. In this position here, again, my shoulders are rolling forward, elbows are turned in. This is a much weaker position in the long run because you're relying so much on a muscle group that we want to try to avoid with a proper L-sit. As opposed to a tuck position that is a little bit more neutral in that spine, thinking more about driving the hips and knees forward, leaning back slightly. This position, again, is allowing me to open up that elbow position, rely more on that locked out joint rather than the muscle structure, okay? Now, once you get to a point where we're doing five to 10 second holds pretty proficiently with technique and position in place, then we can start extending the lever little by little. The next step here, we'll be thinking about extending just one leg. Again, don't think about these skills as all or nothing. Either I have an L-sit or I don't have an L-sit. There are progressions here that I want you guys to be incorporating to kind of see your progress one small incremental step at a time. That's how we learn skills in the gymnastics world. The more progressions, the more tools you have in your tool belt, the easier it's gonna be for you guys to be working towards these higher level versions, all right? So we show you the one leg extended. Doesn't matter to me which leg you start out with, but positionally through the torso will stay the exact same, driving down, starting in that tuck position, extending one leg out, bringing back in, other leg out, back in, and down. If you are feeling a heavy activation from your tricep and a little bit of the back part of that shoulder, it means something's going right. If you're feeling it primarily in the front part of the shoulder, positionally something's off. Like with everything that you do, I recommend you filming. Watch from the side, take out your phone, take out your iPad, set it up and watch from the side so you can see positionally what's happening versus what you think is happening. I guarantee you when you're new to a skill, there will be a lot of discrepancy between those two worlds, what you think is happening in reality. We want to be able to build those two so that you're working towards a little bit more of position, positionally technical, uh, technically sound positions as opposed to just hoping for the best when you're going into these movements, all right? Lastly, we'll show a perfectly extended L-sit with both legs together. We can start out with those knees into the chest and the tuck, and then both legs going out together into that fully extended position. Setup will be the same. Eyes staying directly forward, neutral head position. Knees into the chest, leaning slightly back. Extending those legs out, keeping those legs at horizontal. As opposed, again, to being in a position here where the shoulders are forward and the feet down. Extending forward, trying to open those hips up more towards a position where they're driving forward, all right? The stress, the muscles involved, and the position will definitely change if you're accustomed to doing something that's leaning forward. But ideally, with everything that we do, we're working towards the highest level version of these movements. And what that means is the L-sit is not the end all be all. It's not the end goal. Even if that's your particular goal, I want you to work towards the highest level version. So what's beyond an L-sit? Eventually working towards a V, which means that more weight is forward. And how do we stabilize that more weight forward? Hips and feet by leaning further back. So you need more engagement from that rear delt, more engagement from that tricep, more ability to react against the parallel. Once you have the ability from a compression, strength and mobility standpoint, to do the V, what's the step up from there? Going from a V, turning all the way over until we call a mana. A mana is a very high level skill. Very few people in the world can do it. Very few people can actually do it well. But again, it's a progression. It's working towards something that is along the lines of a tuck to an L to a V to eventually that highest level version. And that's how we do these things technically correct. Not trying to make the lowest level version our primary goal, but thinking about the technical aspects that work towards the highest level version. Okay, with the description of how this L-sit works, again, what we're trying to do is make sure that we're understanding what from the upper body is supposed to be activated here. So this particular accessory exercise is really meant to make sure that we understand rear delt, tricep activation, positionally how to get the hips to drive forward with the feet as opposed to always thinking about the front part of the shoulder doing the work. Theraband is a really easy way to go with this. You do not need a lot of tension. I like to use the blue, it's a little bit on the heavier end. If you have a red or a yellow or a green, it's absolutely fine to start out with something that's a little bit more manageable from a tension perspective. Wrapping around some kind of an upright rig, just a rail post. 
I like to have my hands wrapped around a couple of times, equal tension on both sides of the band. Stand, standing, um, feet a little bit separated with your shoulders squared up with that upright. Palms facing behind me or neutral. So if we're equating this to how we're holding on to the parallettes, hands facing each other is kind of ideal here. Eyes staying forward and what we're gonna try to do here with the elbow staying locked out is pull back as far as we can go, activating those triceps, making sure that we're keeping the hands nice and tight towards the body. Don't allow them to go out very wide or bend the elbows. If the tension is too much, the general tendency right away will be to bend the elbows and think about pulling from the extremity rather than thinking about the elbow staying locked out. I want the shoulder to be the rotation point, not pulling from the extremity. So you're gonna pull back as far as you can go. As a starting point, I like to think about doing 10 reps here, slow and controlled as you become more and more proficient. You wanna be doing with a pause at your end point. So instead of just doing a nice consistent speed, you pull back as far as you can, hold for a good two, three seconds, come back with control. Pull back, hold for a nice two, three seconds, pull back with control. This type of an exercise will start to mimic exactly what you want to be feeling from that torso position, from that arm position when you're on the parallettes and when you're trying to work towards an L-sit. Additionally, another good accessory exercise, instead of using just the bands, we can have independent weight Light weight goes a long way here, so don't feel like more weight going super heavy with the dumbbells is going to be beneficial here, especially when you're starting out. Something light, five, two and a halves, even a pound and a quarter uh, uh, change plates are going to be fine, so don't go very heavy. I would prefer you guys be thinking more about range of motion and proficiency within the movement rather than think you need a heavy weight. I have fives right here. Fives might be a little bit much for most people when they're starting out. I like to start with my feet together, again, because positionally this is how we're going to be thinking about those feet being together when we're in the nail sit. You can do with your feet slightly apart if you need a little bit more stability here. Feet together, eyes facing forward, hips nice and open. Palms, again, either facing each other, neutral in the same way that they'd be if they were on parallettes or on parallel bars, or palms facing behind us with a little bit more of that pull back into the position that we're trying to go directionally. So if we start with our palms facing each other, keeping the hands nice and tight towards the body, pulling back as far as we can, doing our best not to compromise hip position, so no leaning back, no arching, and doing our best not to lean forward into that pike position either. So squeezing the butt nice and tight, as far back as we can go with those plates, and controlling back to our neutral position with those hands right in line with our hips. Again, always being in control, taking those arms as far back into position as we can, coming back with control. A nice consistent pace will be part one, working towards a position where the elbows are locked out, holding that end range, and then slowly bringing it back down. If you're doing it right, again, triceps are gonna lock up on you, you're gonna feel it a ton in the rear delt as well as that tricep, that's a good thing, it's a good indicator that you're doing the position and the, and the exercise correct. Keep that in mind how it applies back to our L-sit. Okay, an additional exercise that I really like to work on here, we use it a lot in the gymnastic world, specifically for an event like Pommel Horse, where we do these circles that are going around the event, trying in the front of that position to extend our hips and create as much separation between our upper body, our torso, and our arms. So that angle is very important. So what does that look like? So say we were on the Pommel Horse, on the leather, or actually on the pommels, in the front part of that swing, what we're looking for is kind of an extended crab position. So essentially, pushing down, hands out to the sides and creating as much space between our hips and the ground as possible, trying to make sure that angle between our arm and our torso is as wide as possible. So as a starting point, just to be able to see whether or not you can do this accessory piece, the crab position is gonna be a starting point. What most people will end up doing is first starting in a tabletop position. Now positionally with the hands, a couple things to note. One, I don't want the hands to be facing forward, okay? Ideally, we're using the hand position to mimic what we're gonna be thinking about doing on parallettes or parallel bars. So facing out towards the sides is gonna be very similar to the same hand position that we'd be utilizing once we're actually on the apparatus. So fingertips out to the side, elbows staying fully locked out, that same rotation that we're trying to do when we're on the parallettes. And from here, driving the hips up towards the ceiling, trying to get those hips as high towards the ceiling as we possibly can. Shoulders, hips at least in line with your knees, if not those hips slightly beyond the position of your knees and shoulders, okay? So again, just holding that position. A Couple things to note on this. One, you're gonna be feeling it in your posterior chain. Are my glutes engaged? Are my hamstrings engaged? Are my lower back engaged? 
yes, that's a big component in being able to keep that position intact. You will also feel some of that activation of what we're trying to feel for the eventual L-sit, triceps rear delt. But the component that will be new for you is going to be the stress that's happening on your elbows. The connective tissue of the elbows is going to be a new position, especially if you're thinking about that external rotation. Something we absolutely have to consider. If you start to feel some pain in the elbow, I'd want you to work on some more isometric work, some more holds and static positions in an easier position. If that means holding in a support position between boxes, or in a plank, or at an angle in your handstand, something that allows you to build a connective tissue before you start to take it to some of these more extreme positions, that's where you want to be. We want to stay away from anything that's super painful. Building the connective tissue around the elbow takes a long time, so I guarantee you this is going to be an area where you're going to start to feel it right away. Eventually, from that bent knee position, we'll start to extend a little further out, locked leg. Again, driving those hips up towards the ceiling as high as you possibly can, feeling those rear delts and triceps kicking in, trying to create that good space between your hips and your hands, and then lowering back down. I like to do about 10 to 15 second holds here. Again, three to four rounds is a good accessory piece prior to doing an actual exercise that might have me doing a lot of L-sit work just to make sure I'm firing the areas that we're going to be seeing once we're actually in the position. Eventually, once you have that extended crab in place, we start to take it up a notch and add a little bit of motion to it. The rower comes very handy here. The setup that I have here has the parallettes in the same way that we had them before. You butt up the back end of the rower towards the parallettes and you'll be facing the rower. Your feet will be on the seat and ideally we're going to be keeping that same extended crab position intact as we rock back and forth, initiating from the shoulders. So essentially your wrist will be your pivot point, all right? You're only going to work within a range where you can keep that position intact, all right? So let's take a look and let's see what some common errors are with this particular exercise. Feet up onto the seat, hands nice and locked out. Again, thinking about that locked out elbow position. From here, driving up into that same extended crab position that we were just doing down on the floor. Shoulders are directly up over my hands. And now from here, leaning forward, opening up that angle. And now here the tough part, leaning back, feeling it in those rear delts, feeling it in those traps, feeling it in those triceps, and then pulling yourself back forward again. Now you're only going to work within a range where you can keep the initial position intact. If you start to lean back and you start to drop your hips, you're going too far, all right? So I want you to start out in a very compact range, keeping the hips as extended as possible and just rotating slightly. A little windshield wiper back and forth from those shoulders. Eventually over time, as you become proficient here, working on the range, keeping that position as intact as possible, nice and extended, slowly working more and more of a range into it as you become stronger through that, that shoulder position, through those triceps, through that rear delt, and the further you lean, you'll start to feel a little bit more trap activation as well. This exercise is a little bit more advanced. Positionally, I guarantee you the first time you try it, you're gonna be like, holy crap, this is a lot harder than I thought it would be, but you build up to it. We'll start in the tabletop, we'll work towards that extended crab, and then eventually work towards a little bit more of that dynamic action. This is specifically working on an area that is normally neglected with our L-sit, what's happening positionally from the shoulder. Most people will focus completely on compression as it relates to the strength of our abs or our hip flexors, and they miss out on the importance of the position of the shoulder. So these exercises here are tackling it from a little bit of a different viewpoint.